Hey everyone, welcome into the True Philadelphia Sportscast and Sports Drag News Baseball Show as we preview the World Series. I am, of course, here joined by my co-host Andrew Santangelo and my co-host for a lot of other videos as well, Steve Duncan. How are you both doing tonight? I'll start with you, Steve. How is your night going? Going really well, watching the Cardinals game and getting excited 14. for this. Uh, yeah, we're, and they're winning 14 nothing. And <laughs> getting excited for this World Series. This is going to be fantastic. Uh, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to it for sure. Yeah, it's going to be a good one for sure. And uh, Andrew, how are you doing tonight as well as we're recording this one the night prior to the World Series on Monday night leading into Tuesday? It is 9.19 p.m. as we started recording. Andrew, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well, thank you. I'm I'm excited for um for this World Series coming up. It's going to be really good. Probably one of the better ones of our lifetime. Coming off two fantastic championship series. I mean, both go to Game Seven. Couldn't ask for anything better than that. And probably one of the most exciting playoff games of our lifetime, honestly, in that Dodge Dodgers Braves Game Seven yesterday. So very excited, still ecstatic from those, and ready to talk about the preview of this great World Series. Hopefully, to be at least. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be a very good matchup, um, a great matchup of a small market, the new age, uh, one of the new age money ball teams that just knows how to puzzle a piece of team together with the best of them uh, in the Rays. And no matter who it seems like from the Rays goes to another organization, they're always successful um, because we see uh, the Dodgers, uh, they're now playing Freeman's play in the Rays who he got to their World Series, their last World Series appearance prior to now, which was against the Phillies, of course. So um, they just have very good uh, chemistry in that whole organization and a whole dynamic, uh, how they're able to put that together with the Dodgers. We know just write blank checks after blank checks and say, okay, give them whatever the hell they want because we want to keep this guy or get this guy because we know he's going to be great. Uh, so it's a complete different structure of strategy. And it's different, and it's interesting, excuse me, how these teams matched up. Uh, d don't you guys think? Because both of them built very good teams throughout their roster, just in two completely different strategies. I'll start with Andrew. What do you think about that, how both of these teams matched up in that struck in that way? No, I completely agree with that. And that you saw it in the regular season. That's why you had these two teams lead the MLB with best records throughout the season, the number one seeds in their respective conference. And, both went through some challenges and adversity to get here. I mean, for the Rays to go down or to go up 3-0, and I, I know it's crazy to say, but when you lose that sick game six, all the pressure starts to go on you, and they overcome all that pressure in game seven and everything uh, to avoid choking there. And then the same thing on the Dodgers' side. You go down 3-1 and the adversity to come back, and it just shows you how deep these two teams are. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, respectively, probably some of the deepest teams in the league. I think the Dodgers are definitely the deepest in the league. And credit to everyone who built the team, that team top to bottom. And we'll see if they're able to get it done this year. But obviously, a lot on there talking about the, them being the choke artist year after year. But so far this year, they were able, able to overcome it once. We'll see if they can do it again. Yeah, I think both teams are the deepest in uh, each of their leagues. Like, meaning, like, I think the uh, Rays were the deepest team after they made some of their additions during the season in the American League when all was said and done, and obviously that prevailed. And then the Dodgers, everybody thought from the start of the season, were the deepest team in the National League, I believe. So I completely agree with that. But, uh, Steve, what do you think of the whole matchup of the team that's the Billy Bean Moneyball-ass team? As Billy Bean seems like he's moved on from the baseball world. Um what do you uh, think of uh, the Rays team like that matching up against the uh, money, money, money spending Los Angeles Dodgers? You know, it is the money, money, money spending Dodgers, but there's something kind of home roots to this team. They've got a lot of players that are very uh, humble. Uh, it's a different feel than normal with the Dodgers here. I, I they, you, I don't get the sense of having a team where you, they, they feel like they're really just better than other people in a, in a bad sense. I, I get a team that really believes that uh, they got to work to win. Um, and not only that, it wasn't like handed to them this year. They really didn't do as well as a lot of people were projecting they were. There was a lot of meshing that came 
this team, and it's kind of grown all the way through. There's something about this team that that uh, kind of almost gives me the same feel of Tampa Bay, but Tampa did it in a way that a team would normally be like that, like you said, building uh, not money, 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 but building through draft or building uh, organically. A lot of people like key to say. pickups, yeah, key small key, pickups that they scout teams well, stuff like yeah. That. Yeah, where this is like the the Dodgers are supposed to be the star-studded, um, you know, got everything sort of handed to them, have all the advantages type team. But I don't get that energy from the group. Like they feel like they are like that, even though on paper they could very well be like that. They It, it feels to me like they uh, they've really grown up a lot this year. I think it's because, Andrew, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but they made three of the last four World Series. Yeah, yeah. first team to do it since the Yankees yeah. in uh, 2001 and 2003. Okay, so if you're going to do that, at a, you're not you're going to be pretty humbled because you haven't won. So, like, you know you have to go leaps and bounds to win – and furthermore, to maybe protect your manager, because we've seen managers fired in, after World Series runs before when they haven't been able to get over the hump, let alone four times. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, I think uh, that's an interesting uh, question as well um, that we raised in the one other podcast I was on, if Dave Roberts will be okay if they don't win. But, but furthermore, besides that, the Dodgers just – um, coming into this or should be, I would assume, the favorites. And uh, most people, I think, are going to say this still even lining up against a very hard-to-beat Rays team is supposed to be a World Series or bust year for the Dodgers, where for the Rays, it's not... I don't think for people going into the season it was necessarily a World Series or bust year this is already a very good winning season for the Rays just as it was for the Braves that got a lot farther battle with a juggernaut team of one of the best constructed like all-star level rosters in a while um so I don't you have to give a lot of credit to them and the Astros as much as I hate doing so uh you got to give a lot of credit to them and their young pitchers that were not part of the cheat strews um so uh, and Kyle Tucker, who was also not part of the Cheat Strohs. But, um, so, the, I think, really, to me, the Dodgers are a team, I don't know about you guys, but that are just deeper than most, like, they're just too star-studded. That's why in the other podcast, we said if Dave Roberts, like, if they don't win this, there's not really much else they can say at this point to save his job. That's why I feel like it might be no matter what they need to win because I think this was the World Series or bust type of year for them. I don't know. What do you guys think? Andrew, I'll let you start. Do you think this was a World Series or bust type of year for them? In terms of the manager, probably. I think when you get there that many times, eventually your job is going to be in jeopardy. And if you can't get over it for a third time, yeah, it's going to be in jeopardy. I mean, from the team standpoint, no, I don't think it, because they'll have all these guys pretty oh, much no, back yeah. next year. Um, but in terms of Dave Roberts, yeah, I'd say he's on the hot seat. Um, he kind of put him in a hole at 3-1 there. Or not, he didn't, but they obviously got into the hole at 3-1, so they had to pull all the tricks and balances to get out, get out of it, win the series. And... I mean, yeah, Rays have had a great season, but when it's all said and done, the Dodgers should be pretty good favorites in this series um, to win probably for most people. So, again, if you lose this series, yeah, it's another disappointing year because after the bets trade, you're heavy favorites throughout the entire season. You were the one seed for if you can't get it done, at, at some point you got to look to it. Is it going to be solely his fault? Probably not. I mean, he's... Gonna, I mean, you expect him to pull the right cards, but at some point you got to say it's time to move on, and then this might be that time. So I'd say his job is not safe just yet. I would totally agree. Uh, Steve, what do you think? That's uh, it's the advantage and disadvantage of having a great roster as a coach, right? Our manager, or, um, coach or yeah. manager, or whatever you're talking about in sport. Uh, 
the thing is, is if you win, it was expected, and if you don't, you're axed. So that's kind of <laughs> the way it was. So you, you, you'll never get, like, it, it, you're never really going to get the notoriety for maybe how great of a coach yeah. you are. Uh, Cooper will probably have that hanging over him in hockey. And he, and even if Roberts wins, it's going to be like, yeah, okay, whatever. You won. Well, yeah, look at the roster you had. So if you lose, but if he loses, it's like, okay, well, that was, I mean, yeah. it's so weird. You made it three times out of four, and now your job is over. I'm sure he's going to land on his feet. Somebody oh, else. He'll get a job right away. Oh, yeah. he doesn't have to worry one iota because there's open jobs right now. And uh, he's awesome. going to be a guy that, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, that would be lovely. But uh, there's, a, there's a lot of jobs right now that he'll be able to easily get marketed and potentially go to. So, yeah, he's not going to have to worry at all if he does get let go. Kevin Cash obviously has uh, no worry at all of uh, being let go because uh, he got the raise above and beyond, I think, what people even thought this year. Wouldn't you both agree with that? Uh, yes and no. I think there was some people really high on the race coming in the year. I think the power rankings-wise that they were top five, top six or seven in the um, in the MLB in terms of power rankings. So I think they had high expectations yeah, coming in. Yeah, it was in. me saying I was um, one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yes and no to a degree. I think... Obviously, Kevin. Obviously, Cash's job is safe. But in terms of, is it a win or bust year for the Rays roster wise? I think it's more of a bust wise and a win or bust for the roster wise compared to the Dodgers because you mentioned the Moneyball system. Uh, Rays are probably gonna have a hard time keeping a lot of these guys with them when when their contracts are up. Unlike the Dodgers, who you know can go out and pay pay those guys. So, Rays are kind of more in a must win situation almost in that sense in terms of losing guys because will the Rays be able to afford repaying Snell, Morton, Glass Snell, and all those guys where obviously the Dodgers can. So if you want yeah. to talk about that sense, you could spin it in that way too. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see because I think both sides got a lot flying for them in that way. That's a good point. The Rays are a team, though, is just like the A's that take the most advantage of their arbitration years to like work out one-year deals to avoid arbitration with players exactly. until like, their last arbitrary year. So they still have a couple. I don't know how much. I, th I think they're running out on Snell. But I know with Glass now they have a couple years, and with like Fairbanks and other pitchers that they just started getting going, they probably have a couple years of arbitration. Uh, if they start becoming consistently very good relievers. Uh, so if they can keep taking advantage of that, they probably still have like two or th three years, I would say. But the Dodgers have like an eternity, yeah, because like they're just a team that continue, as I said earlier, to be able to write a check where if they go, oh, there's a hole that they figured out that we have that we for didn't realize we have until now. Let's just pay for that. So like that's not an it where the Rays scout really well, so I don't think they're ever going to have an issue because of the good foundational players they have that they could keep because the way Margo's situated at this point of his career, I don't know if both of you agree, but I feel like they could probably keep him around for a while because he's not going to get paid an abundance amount of money. He's just going to get paid an okay amount to be a very solid, productive outfielder. Uh, like He's going to get paid less than Kiermaier did. And he, but... um. If you give him tenure, I think he'll appreciate that since he's a guy that will be able to establish himself somewhere finally. You give him like off of a four-year deal, uh, he might not take a lot of money, but he might appreciate the tenure and just take like a decent team contract. So uh, like guys like that, Renfro might feel okay with settling uh, there. He seems to really be doing good down there, um, So especially in the playoffs. So... Like it depends, like, the vibe of the team because we have seen these teams be able to keep guys at times just because of how good their organization seems to be able to build trust with these guys, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I think the next thing we should get into is uh, who do you guys like? Before we go into the pitching matchups, uh, who are some guys you like in the lineups, uh, the matchups of these uh, two teams, the Dodgers versus the Rays? Like, what are some uh, guys you're looking forward to watching in each of these teams' lineups? And I'll start with you, uh, Steve, on this one, and then go to Andrew to uh, close out. 
Well, I, I've absolutely fell in love with Corey Seager for the Dodgers. I just, the guy is just unbelievable uh, in every way, not just in what he can produce on the field, um, his leadership and everything. I think it's been everything for that, for that team. Honestly, he's the glue. Uh, it's, it's been fun to watch. It's been fun to watch, and, and he's such a, uh, a kind of aw shucks type guy. You know what I mean? But he's still. Uh, he keeps the t- he seems to keep the ke- team calm. Um, he's fantastic. If there's there's not too many players where I could see it this young where you think, you know, that guy could probably be a manager somewhere down the road. Like, I, I really love him. Yeah, he's 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 great. Uh, so that would be for sure the the first guy that comes. And then I mean, I really want to see Kershaw now that he's back. I want to see what he can do. Uh, against this Rays lineup, I love I love Kirsch, and I, I, he's probably one of my favorite pitchers to watch. So uh, then you have Bueller, but uh, Kershaw is one of my faves. Uh, as far as Tampa is concerned, um, the it's the pitching of Glass now uh, and Snell. I mean, it, it, and Morton. Like what a. <laughs> You want to say that the Dodgers, okay, they have the better bats, but when you got those three, they can, they can take any. I, I think they can take any roster, any any roster uh, as far as bats are concerned, and keep them to three to four all the time. And I think it's just going to be fun watching that matchup completely against uh, th- that that hitting of uh, the Dodgers. It's going to be incredible to watch that. I agree. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. No, I agree with that. That matchup is going to be uh, huge. What, go ahead, Andrew. I was just saying, no, I, I agree with a lot of those. Uh, first off, I really want to see what Kershaw does. Obviously, he's got the um, the knock on him that he struggles in the postseason. I think this is a favorable matchup for him. I really do. Um, you look at some of the Rays' numbers through this postseason, they're hitting 209 as a team, an all base percentage of 295, which obviously isn't too good throughout the entire postseason. They're relying a lot on the home run ball, which. You figure a really good pitcher in Kershaw, he might give up one or two home runs, but he's not going to give up many hits. So in, in that factor, I think it's a really favorable matchup. A lot of those guys strike out. So I really think this could be one of the better series for Kershaw uh, as, a, as a whole standpoint. One matchup I'm really looking forward to yeah. seeing, not necessarily um, player-wise, but in terms of overall team-wise, is which I really think this is where you're going to see the difference in the series is you mentioned the the Glass now the Snell and the um, Charlie Morton being fantastic starters, which they absolutely are. But the problem is, in my eyes, is Cash likes to pull them kind of early and go to the bullpen. And some of those guys seemed a little fatigued by the end of that series. Uh, I really thought that's why the Astros kind of started coming back, is they looked a little fatigued in that series. So I'm interested to see what Cash does, and assuming he continues to manage the same way. I'm really the matchup I'm really looking forward to seeing throughout the series is the Rays bullpen versus the Dodgers offense because I think that's where the biggest difference for the series is going to come in and if the Dodgers bats stay hot and, and kind of beat up on on maybe a fatigued uh, bullpen or just an overused bullpen whatever you want to call it I think that's where the Dodgers are going to win the game uh, in the late innings but if obviously the Ra- if the Rays bullpen kind of bounces back a little bit and continues to, to dominate games which we've seen in the past you might lean the uh, Rays way in this series. So I think that's where it's really going to come down to is the Dodgers uh, bats in the late innings versus that Rays bullpen. Yeah, I think what's going to help teams in this series is, uh, sorry to cut you off, uh, Steve, that you play Tuesday, Wednesday, have an off day Thursday, play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, would have an off day Monday if need be because that would be after game five. And then so there actually is off days built into the World Series. So that's a little bit. Uh, helpful for these teams, especially to be able to use starters more frequently um, and actually let them go at least four and two thirds or five innings. I agree with you completely, though, Andrew. I think the uh, matchup, the biggest matchups in the bullpen, because I think Kevin Cash, if Glass now and guys like that, Morden um, and like Snell, even who's been a little bit struggling to keep his pitch count down are able to look very steady and go deep into games. Um, 
if they look good that they can go past the fifth inning, I think you should let them ride a little bit because then as soon as they get into one ounce of trouble, you have one of the best bullpens in all of baseball. So you can go to that anyway. You don't have to take them out early. So I'm right with you on that. I think the Dodgers' bats uh, would play heavy in a good way to a tired bullpen. So, yeah, I don't think that would be wise. And I think tomorrow uh, it's supposed to be Glassnell and Kershaw. So if Glassnell is riding a pretty hot hand through the fourth inning, I wouldn't remove him then, especially if he has like under 70 pitches. Uh, or even a little bit over 70. I would let him at least pitch the fifth, if not into the sixth, and then go from there. Um, so, because the good thing about this pitching rule is, too, if you can let your starter pitch into an inning and he pitches well, like, say, gets N out or two outs and then gives up, say, two straight singles, you can remove him. And if you have a guy that's great for a matchup in that situation, you can set it up. So if that situation comes up, like manager's game plan, you have a guy in that can finish the inning and then he doesn't have to face three guys because you don't have to come back out if you finish an inning. So that's also, if your starter can go deeper, it's better to have, it gives you more flexibility with your bullpen and the ability to use like for the Rays, for example, a guy like Aaron Loop, who you don't want facing all types of right-handed hitters in the league. But if Glass now comes into a situation where then Bellinger's up with a guy on first and third and two outs, you could bring him in then because if he gets Bellinger out, you can just take him out. Like, that's just one example. Yeah, and that's where magic's going to be uh, big, too. Is is the experience for Dave Roberts going to help him out? And, and is he going to be a uh, rookie manager in terms of World Series runs in uh, cash? And we'll see what kind of happens in that sense. So I'm intrigued for it. Cash is very statistical, right? Like that's who he runs on statistics. Yeah. And it seems to have frustrated some of his pitchers a little bit at times. Yeah. So uh, uh, that there's an energy to that too that I I, I kind of lean, I don't know. I think he's a little too statistical for my taste, but uh, what am I to say? They're there. So <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Whatever he was yeah. doing, right? Well, uh, dude, I think dude, you, know, it down. you want to, You got to <laughs> yeah. see something more from Brandon Lau in this, in hitting. Like hitting is is going to have to be, uh, definitely at the top. Of, the hitters are going to have to be at the top of their game in Tampa, I think, to win this. Brandon Lau has has kind of struggled. He kind of came out back a little bit in the end of that last series. That for Tampa's uh, sake, I I sure hope he's. Uh, he's hitting well in this series for sure. That's another guy I wanted to bring up there. Yeah, he does. He had a hell of a regular season, so he does need to get going in the postseason. Um, I agree with uh, that for sure. Um, and then different guys, a guy that really got going I want to bring up is um, the catcher that's always been a decent prospect in the league, great fielding catcher. Mike Zunino, who hasn't been able to consistently hit, but he started hitting a pretty good bit in this postseason. If the Rays can add a guy that has that type of pop to hit doubles power or home run power with the type of speed they have throughout their lineup, you can get guys to first to third a lot with him up or first to home because he's going to hit gappers or hit a home run that's going to get both of them home, obviously. So if he can continue to hit consistently, that gives him a good bottom of the lineup more so here. Then you got Randy Rosarino, who they move around. Uh, Willie uh, Adamas, who's a heck of a fielder, very fun to watch, and they're like a wizard in the infield, and becoming a pretty good hitter. So if like you can get those guys to be consistent, that's huge. The big thing for the Rays, though, is um, I'm sure Andrew would agree with this. Uh, and like this guy's like one of the guys I love watching baseball. Kevin Kiermeyer is one of their like energy energizer, bunny heart and soul players of that team. Yeah. How his hand is doing mm -hmm. is going to factor into if he's just going to be a good fielder or if he's actually going to be able to get those clutch hits that he's accustomed to because he's not the best overall hitter. But he tends to come up big in big moments, Kiermaier. But if your hand's bothering you, you're probably not going to do such. So that's going to be a big thing, too, to look out for in this series if one of their star players is able to actually come through or if his hand's bothering him. 
Yeah, my my big guy to watch outside of those those two, um, it's similar to yours, but I really think it, it's going to come down not come down to, but a big guy that has to step up is Manuel Margot. Obviously, we know what his defense has done, but they've been hitting him lead off, and I, I think he's really got to get get it started at, at the top. He he kind of goes through hot and cold streaks at times, and his defense never lets go. Obviously, we saw him make that tr- terrific catch over the wall and everything. So that never takes a hit. But I really think he's got to get things going at the top of the order for that Rays lineup if they want to win the series. Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw, too. I was reading something earlier. They activated Wander Franco, I'm pretty sure. I did not see that. Yeah, I saw that pop up on my uh, phone earlier, um, which would be uh, odd activating your top prospect for the World Series, but, you know, no pressure. It's not too complicated. It is very odd. Baseball is Baseball, yeah, baseball's easy. It's not too hard. <laughs> you said baseball was difficult. Um, but, yeah, I thought I saw that alert earlier. I'm trying to – yeah, here it is. Uh, MLB's number one overall prospect shortstop, Wander Franco, uh, posted – oh, they, they said uh, – no, they're saying are they calling him up because he posted his World Series jersey on Instagram. That's what it is. So he has a World Series jersey – which would lead one to believe they might activate him maybe as like a pinch runner or something like a guy that they could use as a good um guy to put in if need be um or maybe that shows that someone is injured and banged up so they actually need to activate him which would be a negative uh but if they're using him for a positive because of all the talent he has i actually don't think that's a terrible idea because we've seen guys make their debuts we've seen about like I think it's like five guys make their debuts in this playoffs. Yeah, it's been crazy, and that's the fun in baseball. I agree. Wouldn't you agree, Steve? It's fun to see guys, make, and some do it very successfully, make their debuts in the postseason. I love doing that. I love seeing uh, teams do that. And uh, I know that um, quite often it, it can, go bo- can, can go both ways, but sometimes the reward is so great because a lot of rookies – um, they actually go in not realizing the whole situation that's happening at the time. They're so happy to be there, they kind of forget where they are. Uh, that, that sort of happens with uh, rookies in all sports. And you'll see rookies do like unbelievable things. Uh, that is, it's like when you don't know you can't do something, you do it. <laughs> and when you start thinking too much about it, you, you can't do it anymore. That sort of happens uh, quite often with uh, with uh, rookies in in big situations. They 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 they're so um, cool to just happy to be there. They they kind of forget the magnitude of what's happening at that time, and they can do things that uh, maybe later on in their careers. How many times have have we seen a young player go in and do something like that, and then they turn out to be just your average player somewhere down the road. But yeah, in that one moment, in that one the, uh, place, yeah. they're, they're Brandon amazing. Finnegan did it for the Royals, and then he had, and now I don't even think he's in the MLB anymore. Uh, the Reds tried him out. Remember uh, that lefty, that fireball lefty, Andrew, that came up in the uh, World Series and in the run for the Royals that pitched like after he pitched in college, the college postseason? yeah. Year. He did it, and now he hasn't really figured stuff out since. But other guys have done it and have. Um, a guy that deserves a ton of credit, though, is I don't love talking up a division rival of my hometown team, but Christian Pache, who's one of baseball's better prospects, after Adam Duvall got injured, making some nice catches in center and hitting the ball really well, does deserve a ton of credit, though, for stepping into Atlanta's lineup and doing as well as he did, speaking of a rookie as well. That didn't make his debut in the postseason, but barely played in the regular season. He pretty much got like a cup of coffee, if I remember correctly. So uh, he really stepped in and did really well. Uh, I would assume you guys would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It can go the opposite direction, of course. A lot of the rookies can completely can't get their mind off of the situation <laughs> that they're in and and that's generally what ha- what can happen what what another thing that it does if you put rookies in there in certain situations and they do well it changes the whole energy of, of the team it can actually change 
everything it can turn everything around all at one time like <clears throat> if, if you put if, if a rookie goes in does well it just changes the whole everybody's rooting for him to do well and when he does well it brings a a joy to the team so it, and makes you feel like you can do anything now so it's a great play that can work both ways <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah i mean i also um i think a good question too would be what you guys i know mine is michael Bursell is an undrafted guy who, who hit a walk-off homer um against a role as chapman to win a freaking series i mean what can get better than that <laughs> that's my top moment of the playoff um for sure um but what would be uh your guys's top moment of the playoffs i'll let since i let steve start for the last thing i'll let andrew start on this one what would be your top moments of the playoffs because i just love the underdog and per you doing that i mean hats off to him uh being able to do that off of Chapman of all people. Yeah, that's a good story. That's a good one. Um, I got to go with the Dodgers 3 1 comeback. Um, obviously, I know they've expected to be there, but the Cody Bellinger home run, the, the job Kiki Hernandez has done to step up has been huge as well. Uh, that game tying home run and then Bellinger following it, dislocating his shoulder, getting it popped back in and staying in. I think that's my, my uh, postseason moment so far, and we'll, we'll see if that affects him this series, to be honest. The Matt Stafford of the MLB. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Steve, uh, what's your top playoff moments? I don't know. It's kind of weird because they're not in it. They didn't make it. But I liked it when Minter, Minter was put in as a starter. It was the first time since he was in college. And he, and he, he did and well. He, and he pitched three yeah. innings, five strikeouts. It was freaking awesome. I, I loved watching his the, his expression as he was doing it. Like, I'm doing this? I'm doing this? <laughs> it, was, it was so cool. I was really hoping that they were going to win that game for that reason alone. It would have made it even more cool. But I thought that was like, yeah. that was one of my favorites. I could probably think of more. But for some reason, I just really loved that. I just loved the way his expression was through that whole thing like he was almost just a surprise to anybody yeah yeah he did have that kid at the yard of uh, mentality uh going it seemed like uh that was very fun to watch in that game i would uh agree for sure but uh, i don't know if you guys as we're coming to the 30 so minute point here uh, if you guys had any closing uh or a couple like final few thoughts you wanted to offer that you're looking very forward to before we give our predictions on the World Series overall, uh, what like what you want to offer as your closing thoughts before we give predictions. Uh, I'll let uh, Andrew start with this one. What do you have as a couple closing thoughts or one before we go into our prediction? Yeah, it would just be my prediction. Um, honestly, I mentioned the, the Ray struggles at hitting, and I think Dodgers take advantage of it. And I like the Dodgers' offense a lot better here um, all around as they're better situational uh, hitting. And uh, it's pretty funny. They're even ERAs at 3.36 each. So you got that very intriguing number as well. Okay. So your prediction is the Dodgers winning, I'm assuming, and how many games? I'll go Dodgers in six with Clayton Kershaw uh, stepping up, finally getting the job done and winning World Series MVP. Okay. Um I'll let uh, Steve go last uh, since we're <laughs> since we're uh, save the uh, best for last, you know. Uh, but uh, no, um, everyone's amazing. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, the I have I thought when I was on the podcast with uh, Steve and uh, Steele yesterday that the Braves are going to win. Who I think the uh, Rays match up a little tad bit, not t- not a tad bit, match up better against. Um, I was going to say a tad bit, and then I'm like, no, that's not right. Uh, so I, I think this series, though, is going to go seven because I think it's going to be one of the best World Series of um, potentially this decade if it goes seven, and it's the first year of this decade. So, yeah, hang on to them. Um, but uh, I think this has a chance. So I do think, though, because of the Dodgers – having the last at-bat, which they will have in Game 7, too, and the fact that I think all these games are going to be close, that gives them a little bit of an edge, too, which I think I'm going to take the Dodgers in 7 because of just how deep they are with stars, that they're not ever going to be phased, no matter if the game's in, like, the 
game of game seven. So, which I hope does not happen because then it'll be like 4 a.m. But I'm just saying uh, they would not, they would never be phased. So that's why I feel the Dodgers are going to be able to get over the hump here. The Rays still are a little bit raw in terms of being a new team that's new to the being best team in their league boat. Like they haven't really been in this full everyone's riding for them situation before where they're the top dog and not really an underdog. Now, in this year, they're going to be an underdog per se with the betting lines, but I mean in terms of their league. In the AL, they made themselves a top dog this year. Well, they're new to that. The Dodgers have been here. So I think that's going to benefit the Dodgers in the win in seven. But uh, what do you think, Steve? Um, you know what? Before, uh, we were we were talking about uh, when it was Do- the final game and uh, Dodgers in Atlanta, and I think we – we both said that it doesn't matter. Tampa Bay is going to beat either one of them. But there was something about... Yeah, then I thought about last, it. <laughs> there was something about yeah. that last game that made me think that that's not going to be the case. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I Yeah, and then, you, like you said, you thought about it a little more. And uh, I, I just... yeah, We mentioned before that this is like three times in... They've had three times in four uh, in the past four years, and I just see a humbleness about them that I think is going to uh, stick with them. They're not going to get too co- co- too. Over- they're not going to get overconfident, and I think they've just found their way to win. And I, I think the Dodgers are going to win this year. Yeah, I-, I do now. In 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 six or seven, gosh, I don't know. Six, I'll say. Okay, so you're going right with Andrew, who. Seems to be having a couple technical issues right now, but no. that's okay. I mean, technology, like I said, technology sucks sometimes, and I always have issues, so I never blame anybody for having technology issues ever because technology can be a pain in the you know what sometimes. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I agree. I think the Dodgers, with their, the, the Rays have a lot of depth, they just don't have the, the depth that includes like five stars in their lineup at the top. They have a lot of depth throughout, but it's with a good puzzle piece team together. Like I said before, they don't spread with a bunch of top line stars and then have good depth throughout. So I think that's going to help the Dodgers to be able to prevail in this series as well. I would definitely agree with that. I still think it's going to go the full distance, though, and go seven games. I honestly hope I'm wrong, though, because the Dodgers have a World Series and have won in 88. It's been a long ass time. It's 1988. But still, they won. I would like to see the Rays win their first ever World Series, but you can't have everything. So I feel like I am just picking it. I think the Dodgers are going to win. Who I want to win is different than who I think is going to win, though. I would actually prefer the Rays to win than the Dodgers, but I think the Dodgers are going to have more just a bit more in the tank to be able to win and a bit more strings to pull to be able to win. So, yeah, and it'd be cool to have them win. They got the hockey Stanley Cup, then they'd have the pennant. And then who knows, the way the Bucks are playing? Jeez, that would be something else. <laughs> Tampa teams. getting three would be ridiculous. Getting two would be nuts because they're not the biggest uh, touted sports town as it is, as we know. Um, yeah. And them getting two would be nuts, let alone uh, three. But uh, I think Andrew's having some technical issues. So uh, yeah. you can follow him at AJ underscore Santangelo. Those are going to wrap up the True Philadelphia Sports Cast and Sports Fanatic News Baseball, or not baseball, uh, yeah, Baseball World Series preview. Call it the Baseball uh, Championship Series preview show for a bit because we did so many shows for uh, that that we tried to do lives that didn't work because, again, stupid technology. Uh, but, you know, it's okay. But this is uh, the World Series preview show. We hope you liked. If you did, please hit that bell, like, comment, and subscribe. And also, you can follow Steve at Pirlo's NHL Pal on Twitter and me at JJBorder26. Have a great, safe, and pleasant night, everybody. Enjoy this great World Series that we think is at least going six games, which will make it a great one. And if not, seven games, which will make it potentially a historic one. So have a great, safe, and pleasant night for Steve and Andrew. I am Joe. Peace out, everybody.